It's been a while since we've made a video about live hacks, so now we're going to show you 7 tricks that might come in handy. Everyone loves firecrackers, but lighting them in your hands can sometimes be scary, so we light the fuse with electricity. To do this, we need a double-stranded wire, which we need to divide into two and strip the ends. Since each of these wires is covered with a thin layer of varnish, we need to clean them from it by using a knife the following way. Now separate one wire and wind it on the base of the opposite wire bundle to form a bridge about 5mm long. Now we take an ordinary match and put it between the wires as shown in the video. The thin wire should touch the head of the match and wrap around it. Next, we take blue duct tape and fasten the match and the wire together. We end up with a real Remo detonator. But we need a power source for it to work. In this case, we use a 3.7 volt lithium battery. Now we connect the two opposite ends of the cable to the battery and that's where the magic begins. The electricity flowing through the thin wire causes it to heat up to a point where the heat starts to transfer to the match. From the high temperature, a chemical reaction begins to take place, releasing even more heat and the match lights up. It is interesting that after the match has been lit, the copper wire melts and breaks, which is only to our advantage, because all the work has already been done and the battery charge stops being used at the same second. Moreover, such a detonator is reusable, as it has many more small wires that can be used one by one, and this long wire allows you to light firecrackers at a safe distance. Take a plastic stationary knife like this, Pull out the blade and gently clamp it in a vise. Now with a round file, we need to make a groove in the body near the tip of the plastic part of the blade. It should be deep enough so that when you put the blade back in, it will stick out a little bit from our groove. You end up with a great tool for stripping wires or insulations. You just put a wire in it, press it down with your finger and twist it around. This method is aimed at keeping your fingers safe from accidentally cutting them on a sharp blade. There are situations when you need to connect two ends of a wire rope. You might think that you can just tie them together in a knot, but that won't work. But what will work is a little nut like this. We need to thread the rope inside the hole. Then put this on a hard surface and use a hammer to beat on the nut. It will squeeze the cables and connect them firmly. But if you want mega reliability, you can take a few nuts and follow the same procedure. A couple of seconds and you're done. If you want to cut a piece of pipe evenly, you need to mark it, but doing it by hand doesn't make it straight at all. On the internet, I found a way to do it with a cable tie. You need to fix it on the pipe and tighten it. Then use a marker to draw a line pressing it up against the edge of the cable tie. Let's try to saw it. Indeed, in the end we got a very correct and even cut. If we compare it to the factory cut, there's almost no gaps. Sometimes you have to drill a lot of holes with the same depth. You can of course use a piece of duct tape glued to the drill bit, but it has a disadvantage. You push a little harder and the duct tape shifts or breaks off. But if you have a not too thick drill bit, you can use an aluminium rivet like this. Clamp it in pliers and knock the rod out of the cap. Put it on the drill bit to the right depth. Then use pliers to squeeze on the aluminium flat, so it's tight around the drill bit and you're done. Now you don't have to look closely at the limiter, but just drill to the stop and you will get the desired depth. 
If you are in an open space and shilling starts, you should immediately jump into some recess and place yourself in it. If there is no recess, you should lie down with your head towards some object or elevation that will protect your body and head from shrapnel from this side. It's very important to lie down and not to stand or sit and here's why. During an explosion, most of the shrapnel flies in a bottom-up direction from where the explosion occurred, and in a standing position, a very large number of them hit the human body, which can cause serious wounds. But if you're laying down, most of the shrapnel will fly over your body, and in that case, your chances of survival are increased. Take an ordinary plastic bottle, unscrew the cap and use a drill bit to make a hole about 1 cm in diameter. Yes, the drill rotates in reverse, but in case of plastic, it works better rotating clockwise. Now we take a car wheel valve like this and put it through the hole in the cap. You can get it at any car accessory store. And now screw the whole thing into the bottle. And as a result, we get a small but a very powerful lifter, which will work even with a bicycle hand pump. Let's try to use it to lift a sofa that weighs more than 100 kilos. We place our device on a board under the sofa and pump the pressure inside the bottle. As a result, the couch with the help of some unknown magic flies up into the air and we can glue soft pads under the legs, for example. And then we decided to use it to lift a real car by using a 5-litre bottle instead of a real jack. To gain some space, we'll put four bricks underneath it and a board on which we'll place the bottle. We screw the lid on and we're going to use a compressor instead of a pump to get more pressure to lift the car higher. And so we start to pump the air and see what happens. It seems to work and the car actually goes up. At this point, I decide to put a safety cushion there, in the case that the bottle slips out, and keep blowing air in. The weak point turns out to be the cap, which just came off the threads. Fortunately, I put a cushion underneath and the car stayed undamaged. But we are still of the opinion that lifting a car with the bottle is possible. You just need to find a big enough bottle with a very strong cap. If you have ever seen such a bottle somewhere, then tell me in the comments where I can buy it and then we will try to lift the car again and maybe even change a wheel on it that way.